What you're about to see is an interactive presentation about the choking game, brought to you by GASP. We think it's important to tell you that this program has content that's very graphic and may be considered disturbing. Because the choking game is a serious matter of life and death, we have to show you the ugly side of it too, and that includes real 911 phone calls, graphic photos, and stories of personal grief. If you feel you can't handle this, we completely understand. If you like, you can go to the back of the room and a teacher will escort you out. Okay, what is your emergency? My, my brother might be dead. Your husband might be dead. My brother. Your brother. Okay, is he there with you? Uh, I, yeah. Okay. No, he, he might be dead. I don't know. Okay, hold on a second. How old are you? How old are you? Thirteen. Okay. Where's your brother at? Where's your brother at? He's in our room. He's in your room. Is he are you there by yourself? No, 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 no. Okay, I want you to stay on the line with me. Okay, why do you think he's dead? Okay, how old is your brother? Thirteen, we're twins. You're twins and he's thirteen too. Okay, are you is your mom there? Okay, who what's your name? Samuel. Okay, Samuel, hold on. We're on our way over there. I want you to stay on the phone with me, okay? Stay on the line with me. <laughs> no. Oh, God, no. That was an actual 911 call in California a few years ago. Now, just imagine how Samuel must have felt after finding the body of his twin brother. Imagine what his family went through and what they're still going through today. Let's take a step back and start from the beginning. Samuel's brother was a victim of the choking game, which is a deadly activity you might have heard about. So, what is the choking game, anyway? Okay, first and most importantly, it's not a game at all. It's actually just an act of hurting your brain on purpose in exchange for a few seconds of feeling lightheaded. Anyone who thinks it's a game probably just never thought of the consequences. Killing brain cells, passing out, sometimes even permanent brain damage, or even death. It's not always just called the choking game, either. It's known by a lot of different names. Some of these names should give you a pretty good idea of what we're talking about here. Suffocation? Blackout? Flatliner? Do those really sound like games to you? So, how does the choking game work? There's a lot of variations, but they all come down to the same thing choking on purpose to cut off the flow of blood to the brain. See, when people think of blood flowing through your body, the first thing that comes to mind is your heart, which pumps the blood. But it's your brain that gets the biggest share of that blood. Your brain needs around 20% of the oxygen you breathe to function normally, and the only way to get that is from fresh blood that comes directly from your heart. But sometimes people choke themselves, maybe using their hands or something like a belt or a rope. After they do that for a little while, they start to feel lightheaded because their brain's actually being suffocated. Then, when they just can't take it anymore, they release the pressure on their chest or neck. And then, all that blood that was blocked up floods the brain all at once. So, at right around this time, their brain cells are starting to die by the thousands. And as the cells die, there's a chemical release that sets off a warm and fuzzy feeling. But what people have to realize is that this feeling is actually just their brain dying. And that's about it. Even if they're lucky enough to survive, they've already killed off millions of brain cells that they'll never get back. I heard from somebody that it's actually pretty safe. It's not safe at all. Many times when people choke, they pass out from the lack of oxygen because there's no way to know when a person is about to faint. Come on, people faint all the time. What's the big deal? In this case, fainting is caused by the brain starving for oxygen. Brain cells are dying and will never regenerate. This can result in long-term brain damage or even a vegetative state. And pretty often, when people faint from this, they can fall and injure themselves. There are reports of broken bones, concussions, major cuts, eye injuries, and even deaths from the fall. In fact, it's estimated as many as 250 to 1,000 young people die in the United States and Canada each year playing some variant of the choking game. But it's tough to measure the stats because so many are ruled as suicides. But it's safer than using drugs, right? That's a very common mistake, which is why so many smart kids get mixed up with the choking game. They think it's safer than drugs and that it won't get them in trouble. 
But the choking game can be just as dangerous as drugs. Not only can it give you permanent brain damage or even kill you, it also seems to be addictive once people start doing it. I heard it feels weird when you wake up. Is that true? That's because the blood is rushing back into the brain. This surge can lead to a stroke, which is blood in the brain, or even seizures. Either of these can lead to severe brain damage and even death. I also heard that some people start twitching before they wake up. That twitching is the brain having a seizure. At this point, there's brain damage taking place that can't be reversed. Millions of brain cells are dying each time this happens, leading to bleeding in the brain or silent strokes. So why are so many people dying from this? When kids choke themselves, the plan is to release pressure at just the right time before they pass out. But there's no way to know exactly when that'll happen. If they pass out first, the weight of their body pulls on the rope and they can die. Also, the rush they're getting can be addictive, so once they start, they end up wanting to do it more and more. A lot of times they start off choking with their friends, but then they end up doing it by themselves. Which is even more dangerous. Nobody's around to help them if they pass out. So, you're saying it's safe to do it with a friend? Absolutely not. It's never, ever safe. Even if you're not tying something around your neck, you're depriving the brain of oxygen. If you have someone push on your arteries in the neck and they put pressure on a group of nerves, it can cause an immediate heart attack. There's also the chance of seizures, a stroke, or injuries from a fall, and you're always killing brain cells that can never be replaced. We're talking permanent damage in just a few minutes, even the first time you do it. Within three minutes without oxygen to the brain, a person will suffer noticeable brain damage. Between four and five minutes, a person will die. Some of those kids who died were alone for as little as 15 minutes before someone found them, and it was already too late. Okay, so who's actually doing this? Mostly boys and girls between 9 and 16 years old, all over the country, maybe even in this area. A lot of kids do it because they don't want to get caught with drugs or alcohol, so they think this is a safe game that won't get them into trouble. But by now, you see that's not true. But it's my life, so it's nobody else's business, right? You're not the only one who cares about your life. For example, just think for a minute about... Your parents. Imagine how your parents might feel if they had to go through the tragedy of losing you. Think about your brothers and sisters, if you have any. Many times, it's those other family members who find your dead body. How would you feel if you found theirs? And think about your friends. If you die and your friends are there when it happens, they could be charged with murder. And if they know what you're doing and they don't say anything, they'd have to live with it for the rest of their lives. How do I know if somebody's choking themselves? What are some signs to look for? There's a few very common warning signs that someone is choking themselves. Look out for bloodshot eyes. Frequent or unusual headaches. Strange marks on their neck. Doors that are always locked. Knots tied around their bedroom. Marks on bedposts and closet rods where it's worn down. And frequent disorientation after spending time alone. So if I know someone who chokes, what should I do? If you're doing it yourself, stop. If you know someone else who is, please tell them to stop. And don't just take their word for it. Be sure to tell an adult about it. Yeah, but then my friend's just gonna get mad at me. We're not going to lie to you. That's very possible. But is it better to have a friend mad at you for saving their life, or having a dead friend? Your friend may not realize you're saving them, but in the long run, trust us, this choking game is a killer. Okay, then who should I tell? You can talk to anybody you trust. Your parents are a great place to start. You can also talk to any other family members, like a brother, sister, and or uncle. You may also want to talk to your friend's parents, because this affects their home and their family too. Another good place to talk to someone is the school, where you might have a teacher or guidance counselor that you feel will listen. But really, you can talk to any responsible adult that you trust. So if someone asks me to play the choking game, how can I say no? When you think about it, there's a lot of ways to get out of the choking game. You can use humor. No thanks, I need all the brain cells I've got. You can also give them a good reason. Choking yourself? You know that can kill you, right? You can always walk away. If someone asks you to do it, just leave. You can also hang out with kids who have better things to do than choke themselves. Or, you can just totally avoid the situation. If you know people that are choking themselves, just don't go with them. When you stop and look at the pain and suffering this causes, it makes you wonder, how can such a deadly activity be considered a game? Why do so many smart people think that killing off millions of brain cells is a good idea? And why is it so hard to stop someone with so much potential from destroying their lives and the lives of those they care about? The reality is, it's not hard to stop the choking game, at least not once we open our eyes. We can stop this together, just by talking about it, thinking about it, and watching out for it. And if we learn anything from the thousands of lives that ended too soon, 
It's that you can make your life whatever you want it to be. Your life is in your hands. Okay, Samuel, we're on our way. We're going to find out real quick where there is, okay? We're on our way. I've got some police officers on their way, and I've got medical aid, the fire department, and the paramedics are on their way, okay? Okay, you stay on the phone with me. Okay, honey, where, where are your parents at in case we have to contact them? My dad's in Berkeley. My mom and him are separated. My mom's up here. Okay, is your mom at work right now? No, she's here. Oh, she's there with you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is your mom's name Sarah? Yes. Okay, is she looking at your brother right now? Yeah, she's going to put him back to life. Okay. <laughs> Can you ask her if she's getting any response out of him at she's all? Not, not at okay. all. Okay, we're on, tell her we're on our way. Did you tell her medical is on their way? Okay. They're okay. on their way, Mom. They're on their way. Dearest Jason, if your spirit was there the night you died, you saw my grief and how I cried. I could not believe you had to go, and over and over I told you so. I stroked your chin, your hair, your brow, in shock that this had happened now. Beneath your lids I glimpsed each eye. It was not true that you could die. Your eyebrows neath my fingertips, the whiteness of your precious lips, my fingers brushing through your hair. The pain was more than I could bear. But I could not leave your side. I touched and kissed and stroked and cried. My tears upon your face did land. I rubbed your arms and held each hand. My fingers made a futile trek to erase the marks upon your neck. Your hands were cool as were your feet. I wrapped them up to give you heat. I pulled the blanket to your chin, a last attempt to tuck you in. I wanted so to comfort you, to make you warm, to pull you through. But mommy's kiss was late this night. My kisses could not make it right. Your face was calm and oh, so blue, but still so beautiful, it's true. You were everything to me. To lose you was not meant to be. It's not just your body I will miss. It's your touch and voice and thoughts, your kiss. Your ideas, songs, and how you talk, the way you sleep and how you walk. Your smile, your laugh, your love of rain, your great intolerance of pain, your love of animals, all our pets, the fighter planes and battleships. It's your whistling and the food you ate, your complaints of all the stuff you hate, your grin when you were filled with joy, the energy of a restless boy, the never-ending hum of noise, the sound effects you gave your toys, Christmas, Halloween and such. When you were here, they meant so much. Your arms encircling round my neck. Your love of space, Star Wars, Star Trek. The way you'd find a quiet nook to sit and read a brand new book. And always ready, on the go, to ride four-wheelers, play in snow. Boating and camping with your dad, and dreading schoolwork, oh so bad. The hurt that is the worst for me is what your life will never be. The world was yours as it should have been. But this is now and that was then. If only I could change the past. I would be gone but you would last. For that is how it was meant to be. That you'd be here and missing me. I love and miss you terribly, Mommy. <laughs> 